welcome to this video, 18 Gap here, and I am proud to introduce Richie Wellens, the gaffer, uh, Doncaster Rovers manager. Is it gaffer, boss, on the training ground, Richie? Uh, whatever you want to call me. And the players call me gaffer, yeah. So we'll go with gaffer then. Um, thank you for taking the time to come onto the channel, have a, have a quick chat. Um, just a, a few questions, really, get to get to know you a little bit more, a bit, a bit more about your background, um, your time at Donny, and um, how you're settling in as the manager with the team around you and a little chat about the current situation that we're in and kind of plans going forward. Hope that's yeah, okay. Fine. So make a start with kind of your playing career. What what pulled you to, to Donny Rovers to, to begin with on that on that first stint when you when you came to play for us? Well, I'd always been a, a, a good player for the level, probably too good for the level, um, but I'd never had any guidance off any managers. Um, we just literally go out and play. Um, and just show you what you can do. And a lot of it was off the cuff, um, which got me to a certain level. But, you know, I realised that I was I was not playing as, as a higher level as some of my, my mates who, who was playing at other teams in the championship. Um, and, I, and, I, and I knew that I was I was a better player than them. So Sean O'Driscoll was a big, a big thing because I knew how good he was. I knew how structured he was. And he helped me straight away. He gave me a framework to work from. So I wasn't playing off the cuff anymore. Um, if at ever any, any stage we were struggling in the game or I was struggling on a, on a personal point of view, I had basics to go back to, which would get me back in the game. Um, so Sean was a big was a big pull. But also the, the stadium, the training ground, all the infrastructure was there to, to, to you know to do well. I think they'd finished around mid-table in League One the, the, the previous couple of seasons. So um, you know, the selling point for me was that Sean wanted me to come and, and be the, one of the last pieces of the cake and put the icing on to try and get us promoted. I think that that definitely works. I think you were a, an integral part of that of that squad in that midfield. You kind of did a lot of the dirty work, but you also had that ability to to kind of you from from a fan's point of view, it seemed like you you lent the ball to players and you and you demanded it back. And I kind of see that going into the management where you do demand quite a lot from your players. Do you, have you have you taken that from playing days where? That kind of winning mentality is try to kind of go over onto your management style. Well, I think you have to you have to set demands. If you don't set demands, you don't try and be the very best that you can be, not just as a team, as a manager or as players, then what's the point? So um the demands will always be there. I think the demands that, that are set as a player to, to my teammates are a different how I set them as a manager. And um, the way that I put things across is all constructive, whereas when I was a player. Sometimes I wanted to rub my teammates up the wrong way, so they I get a reaction from them, and obviously when I get a reaction from it, mean I needed to carry on performing. It's no point me digging them out and demanding if I'm not if I'm not actually doing a business myself on the pitch. So it's a little bit different now. You're trying to be constructive um, and trying to help the players in any way. Set demands, but set realistic demands. It's no point me asking people to take four or five players on and put in the top corner when it's sometimes it's impossible for them to do it. So we always try and understand what makes a player's tip, make sure we know what their strengths and weaknesses are, and then set demands on, on re regarding what their strengths and weaknesses are. And on, on that, how, how are you finding this current squad that we've got at Donny Rovers in terms of kind of taking them demands on board and, and trying to improve? Because we have got quite a young squad. I think there's potential within that squad. Um, do you think that's starting to show through now? I mean, we're six games, one defeat in six games, do you think we're starting to turn a little bit of a corner compared to the start of the season? Right, the results return a corner and we've been a little bit more difficult to beat. But in terms of the finished art, we're nowhere near it yet. We're absolutely nowhere near it. We've probably lent on the younger players too much and they're experiencing a lot of things for the first time. You know, we've played at some big stadiums and some of them have not froze, but it's been a bit of a, a bit of a, cult, not a culture shock. They've just wanted to go down and play and enjoy the occasion in front of a big stadium. When actually at the back of the mind, the most important thing is competing and winning the game. And we've and we've we've we've, we've kind of got away from that. Um, but the biggest thing has been the injuries. As a, you know, at not any stage have I been anywhere near picking a full strength team. So, you know, when you inherit a, a team that needs rebuilding, and there's still quite a few players within that budget, you know, your hands are tied massively. And we tried to get the best with, with with what available funds that we have. And I think if we've got everybody fit, we've got a a squad capable of, of, of picking um, consistent results up in this league. 
But when you're consistently chopping and changing and people are suspended and then are injured, and then you look like at, at Cheltenham at home, we played really well. And then the next game after that, Cambridge, we, we, was, we was very, very good. Then you lose two or three players from injuries and you're having to shuffle a pack again. It can be really difficult, not just at our level. Look at a team like Liverpool that, that won the Champions League and when they won the Premier League, you lose one player in Virgil van Dijk and the points difference is about 15 points just by one player. So you imagine us chopping and changing three or four players every week. It can be tough. Yeah. So how, how do you remain positive through kind of this situation where you're struggling to put a squad together or a consistent squad um, that kind of knows how, how each other's playing? You're having to drop certain individuals in and certain individuals out. How, how do you as a, as a management team remain positive and kind of get that message across to the... Well, to we, the we, know that the play, we know that the players are improving. The young players are getting more experience and being exposed to different situations. So they will learn and improve from that. So that's a really big positive. Um, but I think the biggest positive is, is in every single game, the players are given everything. So it's not at any state. Listen, we had a 10-minute spell at Ipswich away where my two centre-halves were concussed and we, we just went under. Um, but apart from that, the players have given everything. We've, we've made fundamental individual errors and we've, we've, we've let ourselves down at set plays um, and we've let ourselves down in little situations by, by a lack of communication. But the players are, are, are putting every, everything in. So. You, you you see some clubs that you know kind of give up the fight a little bit. One thing we've not done is, is give up any fight, and we believe that these games come up that we can win. Yeah, I mean we've got Lincoln coming up next. We've would you say it's home comforts at the minute? I mean eight game, uh, seven games played at home, three wins, two draws, scored eight goals, conceded eight goals. It this form is much better at home than what it is away. So do you look at the home fixtures and think that's where we're going to be picking us points up or? You look at away fixtures as well and think we should be picking points up here. I mean, you no, we want to win every game. Yeah, we should do. But I think if you look at our away games as well, we, we played Rotherham away with no wingers, no striker. Our performance levels were, were quite good. And we just was not a goal threat because we didn't have the personnel. Okay. Exactly the same with Sheffield Wednesday away, where for 70 minutes, we're, we're better than them in, in every department, apart from the final third. And then we, we get sucker punch. So there's, there's been away games where... They've been tough even if we would have got a, had a full squad. But our lack of goal threat has been alarming, to be honest, in, in some of them away games. Um, but home, we, we've looked a, diffi a difficult ta team to beat. We lost on the opening day, which was a, was a setback. Yeah. And then we've lost the other game at Wickham at home. Again, for me, Wickham, there was nothing in between the two teams. Club that relegated from the Championship. And we didn't defend two balls in our box where someone's physically just got stronger than, 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 than ourselves. And... Apart from that, I think we was probably better than them in the majority of the game. So you always, you always, you can't just look at the outside and go, "Oh, you, your away form is not great, but you're okay." Why? You have to look at the reasons why. They're not excuses. They're reasons where they are staring you obviously in the face. And once we improve that, which we have done now with, with some of the attacking players coming back fit, I believe John Taylor will be back fit for this Saturday. So that is massive positives for us. Yeah, I think John Taylor will add that attacking threat. Um, especially in in behind the defences. Um, Okunabiri, he's looking like he's out for a little bit longer than, than what was expected. Are there plans to, to kind of look for a replacement in January? Is, is Graham Younger on that at the minute? No, or... we'll, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do. We'll, we'll have you getting plays in January, 100%. It'll be yeah. difficult in the summer, you know, Graham had been, been employed by the club a couple of months before I came in. So we're trying to get that relationship going as quick as possible while we're in the middle of a more or less a total rebuild with obviously the finances through COVID being being cut and, and a lot of the budget being taken up by the existing players that are still here. So it was difficult. Um, uh, one thing we will be doing now is we'll be recruiting players that are suited to Doncaster Rovers and I would have put my eyes on them. So I would have set eyes on every player that we signed from now on. I'd have put my eyes on and I'll put my name to. So that, that's a big difference. Um with Taylor and Okabir, they've been they've been a huge blow. We play we play crew away last Tuesday. If I've got speed and a goal for it on the bench, we win that game. Because at the moment, Hawula, Thiago, Doldu, we've been flogging them. You know, you, you you watch a lot of teams when you're making changes, you bring a striker off, you bring wingers off, and they're the keep they're the, the ones that are doing the most sprinting distance, and they're the ones that want to keep fresh. And we've not been able to do that. So do you think that is kind of one of the main main problems that we've got at the minute, just such a 
such a thin squad, not being able to rotate and keep players fresh that we are feeling that kind of that sap of energy. And I mean, from from a fan's point of view, I see positives for 50, 60, 70 minutes, but then there's there's dips within the game and you're gonna you're gonna get games that ebb, ebb and flow anyway. Um but it, it seems like that energy level's not quite there. Is that just because of the, the amount of games that these guys have played and is that well, like a rotation? It's not just the, the the amount of games played, you have to look at the circumstances. So Jordan we were always out for two months, so he didn't have a pre-season. Joe Doldy we had to sign after the window. Um so he had no pre-season and they've gone from no pre-season at all to them playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and the majority of them have been playing 90 minutes. So it's not a physical tired. You you just haven't had that break to then refresh them, then to get them fitter and sharper again. And, and like I say, usually what you want to do in, in, as a team is you want to you want to get your plan A. And if your plan A is working great, well, then after 67th minute, you've got reinforcements to continue that plan A. And what we've had to do is we've had to stick with the players that are on and then obviously you can see that the fatigue levels are kicking in and then we've had to revert to a different a different type of us playing which I don't like I would prefer to have strength on the bench to continue what we're doing but obviously with them extra energy levels in the last 20-30 minutes Yeah I, I agree with that um, looking at the cup games against Scunthorpe Papa John's Trophy we saw quite a lot of the youth team coming in um, from what I saw I thought they did themselves justice is that are they part of the plan going forward to try and get them into the first team and, and help out where where possible? Or is it kind of look at them as fringe players in the next round of the Papa John's, things like that? No, they, every player is here, but we I stress to them all the time, the players pick the team. So they're in training every single day. I set eyes on them every single minute of every single day. And I, I pick players that's based on training. Obviously, you get certain players that are not great training players but produce it on a match day, which is, is fine. But in the main, people who train really well every single day get picked on a Saturday. I'm, I'm here to pick the best team. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or you're 28, you'll get picked if you're training really well and then you take it into the games and, and you can keep the shirt. But the, the training has not been of a standard from the young players. They're getting better, they're getting stronger um, because the baseline fitness was, was nowhere near it. Um, and in the case of someone like Lerat Kasane, we loaned him out a couple of times and that parent club sent him back, which was not a good sign for me. Um, in the last two weeks, his training step, stepped up a lot, which is really, really good. And then he's gone and self, done himself justice with 90 minutes against Sunthorpe and he'll be in the plans now going forward. But they have to do everything they can. It's not, a, it's not a tap where you switch it on and then you want a week off and you have a rest and then you switch on for a day. Every single day you have to be on it. And, yeah, and, that, and that's the reason why the young players have not been... The gap, because we haven't got a 23 team, the gap between the 18s and the first team sometimes is a big gap and it can take a longer time period to bridge. Is that something that the club are looking at for, for like a long-term future, bring, like reintroducing the, the under-23s to try and bridge that gap? Because I think a club at our size, we've seen it with the budget and potentially struggling to get players in that maybe an under-23s and bridging that gap would be a good step for, for a club. Like us. Yeah, I think I think if you look at it now, we probably would have signed Aidan Barlow, Joe Olawu as an under-23s type development players. We didn't think we're quite ready yet to be in our first team, but we see a bit of potential in them. And if we had a year or 18 months, we, we think we can make them into to really good players. So it's a really good point. But like most clubs, you, you look at someone like Brentford and Huddersfield now, who have scrapped their academy and just have a B team. I think probably is it's a good model to go down because, you know, what we tend to do is we get really good 12, 14, 15 year olds and they never reach the first team. We sold them to a club very early on. So we never get the fruits at labour. Whereas if we got them into the first team and they could play 20, 30 games for us, instead of us getting 100 grand, 50 grand, whatever it might be, that 50, 100 grand can then potentially become a Ben White and where it's two and a half million pound because it's been exposed to the first team. Yeah, yeah which is a lot more positive for for our bank balance, isn't it? Exactly, but also it, it improves the team. Yeah. So that it's, it's a catch-22. It improves your team, but it also exposes player, players to first-team environments, which puts a lot more value on them. Yeah, and I think that first-team first team football is invaluable. I think 
talk, talking to, to Cops about it last time when he was on the channel, that you can play as many under 18s or under 23 games as you want, but there's just that, it's missing that competitive edge, which you can't get anywhere else other than first team football, really. Yeah, that, that's a mentality, your mentality of playing week in, week out as a development player, as a development coach, there's no pressure on you. So if you're one nil down with five minutes to go, you keep playing. Whereas at first team level, you need you need to get that point. You need to try and get back in the game. So it's a different mentality, forcing the issue a little bit more, playing on the front foot, not letting the opposition out. But then also it's a fitness. You know, you, we can put a, a, a let's say a five k run, and an eighteen year old will match a Tom Anderson or a Tommy Rowe. But then when we get into the physical fitness of football, you know, them 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 lads that have got hundreds of games in the legs, physically the output is. Is a, is a world of difference. So it's about getting the exposure. That's why we want to loan Ravenhill and Lerac to these, to these non-league clubs to expose them to first-team football, but to also get that power in the legs so they can come back and make an impact for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, moving on to this weekend's game, we've obviously had a, an international break. Um, atmosphere in and around the dressing room, is that still positive regardless of, I mean, we're, we're 23rd in the table, but we're only three points away from getting out of the bottom four. Um, Lincoln, on paper, at home is a winnable game, but we've, we've got to put that effort level in um, as we do with every game. What's kind of the, the thoughts coming into into this fixture on Saturday? I don't, I don't think I've ever really seen a team that has, has lacked confidence, to be honest. Um, so the, the mood around the training ground is good. We've obviously missed um, probably five or six bodies this week through injury, and then we've lost Thiago, Galbraith and... Pontus to international, so we'll, we'll probably get them, we'll get Pontus back today. Um, Galbraith and Thiago will be back tomorrow. So it can be a little bit disruptive, especially with the numbers. Um, and ideally, I would have liked him back today so we can do the planning today and tomorrow for Lincoln and leading on onto Friday. So um, it can be a little bit disruptive, but the, the, the mood around the training ground is good. You know, the camaraderie is good. And I think we, we're starting to see signs that, that we are only improve. Obviously, the injuries w will help returning. I know we keep going back to it, but football's all about players. It's yeah. all about players. You can put, you know, I watched the Grand Prix the other day. Lewis Hamilton's car is going 30 kilometres faster in a straight than everybody else's car. Well, no shit. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton wins a Grand Prix. It doesn't matter if you're a great driver or a, 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 an average driver. If you've got a faster car, you're going to win the race. So... Yeah. If we've got our best players fit, the results will will obviously be better in the long run. So, yeah, excuse my French there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, it's it's all about getting these players back, then, isn't it? Um, a lot of work to do for for those. Hopefully, we start seeing them coming coming back in. But the players that we've got at the disposal um, need to need to step up and put that effort level in. Like like you say, play for the shirt. If you play well and you train well, you you keep that shirt, and then it's up to these players coming back in from injury to to perform at that level to to take it off them. Then we've got that competition for places, and I think when you played for the Rovers, there were there was always that competition for places. There was that camaraderie within the group, um, and I think it was full of characters and individuals that I do see within this squad. But sometimes I think some of them hide a little bit at the minute. Um, I don't know if that's just from an outsider looking in. Can you see certain individuals and characters as, as leaders within the squad? I think as we as we go along, they'll just keep getting stronger. Don't forget, we've we've, we've probably chucked 14, 15 players together and, and that takes a little bit of time. The pre-season was so disruptive, you wouldn't believe, where we pick up a case of COVID, 10 players are, are close contacts. We don't see them for two weeks. Then they come back and something else happens and then other people. So it's we're still obviously building relationships all, all around the clubs from, from staff to players and obviously between the players themselves. But I do believe that we've got the likes of Matt Smith, Ethan Galbraith, Joe Oliver, who's come in and done really well for his age and considering it's his first, his first season. He will continue to grow. And I, I do believe that at the moment, probably for the first two months of the season. We probably asked a little bit too much of, of Tom Anderson and Tommy Rowe, uh, Ben Close, the ones we've gained under the belt to lead this group. Um, as the younger players get more experience, then obviously they can start to lead as well and they'll feel more comfortable um, being more outspoken and, and beginning to lead themselves and taking responsibility on themselves. So 
Um, it is a work in progress, but with young players, you have to you have to make mistakes to, to learn. So, um, I do believe in the next in the next couple of months, and January is going to be big for us. But we need to put ourselves in a position. Come January, we're in a much stronger position. One to attract players, but obviously more importantly to catch the teams above us. Yeah, definitely. Um, you mentioned Joe Olawu there. Um, his contract runs out in January. Is he's impressed me. Um, from what I've seen, is is he in the plans in January to to extend that and hopefully keep him at the club? Yeah, we've offered him a new deal. No, we've offered him a new contract. Um, it's with his agent. I think he's just in the middle of changing agents, so it'll take it a little bit more time. But um, he's aware of it, so we'll, we'll wait to see his decision. Yeah, he looks looks a good player, and like I say, I've been impressed with what I've seen of him when he's come on and, and when he's played. Definitely. No, he has he has all the tools. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's 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 a big enough size. He's quick. He's good with the ball at his feet for a centre back. Um, he's just again he's played twenty three football for the last two or three years, and he's never been exposed to diagonal balls, big men leaning on him, um, crosses in his box or every two minutes long throws. So it's something that he goes he needs to go through. He needs to experience to to then come through the other side and, and be a better player for it. It sounds relentless at kind of professional level. The just the bombardment of balls in, in the box that you get. So, yeah, like I say, it's a, it's a steep learning curve, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is, but I'm, he, is, he is improving. Yeah. Um, I am conscious of time. I know that you've got to get off in, in a I short just while. Have to so knock. Just, a, just a few more few more questions. Um, so, the positivity around the club, um, or from within the club, at the start of the season, everybody was on the same page. It was definitely a rebuilding season. Um, it's going to take time. We've kind of it's quietened down from from the club over the last couple of months or so. Are you all still on the same page? Are you still kind of going in the same direction as a as a management and a and kind of a backroom staff sort of team? Because yeah, ab- well. absolutely, absolutely. And listen, I know I know supporters get get frustrated, and there's no there's no one more frustrated than, than me at the club. But one thing I have to say is I've never felt that frustration in the home games. You know, we played MK Dons at home, and we and we win in one nil. And so we're winning two one, and it's they're a good team. That their team is three years progress. They've had an unbelievable summer in recruiting proven players who have been sold for millions of pounds, and we're hanging on. Our, our shape is good, but we're hanging on. Our supporters stayed with us. You know, same in Mork in the last ten minutes was a was a grind. Um, we 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 go two 0 down early at home to Wickham. But the supporters can see that we're trying to get back in the game against a really established, experienced team that have come down from the championship. So one thing I will say is that the supporters have been tremendous at home. At not one stage have I felt that they've 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 been they've shown their frustration and got it across to the players. So I think that's the biggest thing. The relationship, the biggest relationship at a club is between the manager and the CEO and the chairman, which is very, very good. But then the the, the relationship between the supporters and the players and how that trend you know, transcends itself across. I think it's important. And I do believe we've got that. We need more wins. We get that. But um, our home form has been good. And, and part, the biggest responsibility of that has been from the, the feel-good factor that the supporters have given us. Yeah, I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head. It's massive that the, the fans are behind the, the team, especially in, in the position that we're in. We can be the 12th man. Um, you look at Cheltenham at home, 3-0 up, and then going down to 3-2 with... Seven minutes added on, I think it was. He played about nine or ten. Yeah. Um, that, that was nervy, but you've got to stay behind the team, haven't you, and try and pull them through. Like you say, a young team, a little inexperienced here and there. Um, that that boost from the fans can be massive. Yeah, No, and that's just game management. We're free nil up and we play a short corner and leave ourselves exposed on the edge of the box. We leave 1v1 at the back and then we get a penalty. They miss the penalty, but that momentum and that feeling of making a mistake can can have an effect. So some of our players have never been free to look in a in a in a league game. And they make one little mistake that changes the dynamic and the momentum of the game and it gives it gives Cheltenham a, a chance. <laughs> we are trying to improve. That's just a, an easy communication. We you know if we're playing a short corner, okay, no problem. We bring an extra body from the edge of the box and, and we balance it off so they so they don't count what's happens. But um no we like I say we're learning and we are getting better. Yeah. Um and one more question um, before I let you go. When the fixtures come out as a player and as a manager, are there any kind of away games that you look at or look out for and think 
that's the one that I want to go to. And if so, why? Well, I think the, the, the obvious ones are Sheffield Wednesday, um, Sunderland, the, the big clubs. But when you go to them big clubs with a big, with a big crowd and you're playing against experienced teams with big budgets, you want to feel really comfortable in your own team. OK, so when we've been to, to Sheffield Wednesday away, we've been to Rotherham. I wouldn't class Rotherham as big as Sheffield Wednesday, but we've been to Sheffield Wednesday and I'm picking a team that I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. That's not a nice feeling to have as a manager, you're knowing that you're going in, you know, you've got players like to Barry Banners on 30 grand a week and, and you're picking a team when I've got no strikers. Or I've got a striker that is an 18-year-old who's, who's not quite up to fitness yet and I know for a fact he's going to blow up after 60 minutes. But how can I influence that? We try and get our performance levels as best we can, which we did. But you're always in the back of your mind worried about that goal threat. So as a manager, you want to know what is happening in your team. You want eight and nine players consistently. I know what I'm going to get from them. They can be a winger. They can be a striker. They can flicker in and out of the game and not touch it for, set, for 10, 12 minutes, but then create a bit of magic. But eight and nine players, you need to know exactly what you're going to get from them. I've not been there. I've not been comfortable a lot of times with, with the team that I've been picking. But as as we are getting a little bit more experience, I'm getting more comfortable with the, with the teams that I've picked. So, um, again, Sheffield, Wednesday and Sunderland at home will be really good games for us. Yeah, I'm looking forward to them myself as well. Have you uh, have you tried to get Cops and Greeny to lace their boots up again? Or are they are they not bothered? <laughs> no, I mean, at the moment, with the amount of injuries we've got, right, all three of us actually joined in training. So, um a couple of days ago, we had 15 out injured. So we had 15 out injured and then the three lads that went to international. So yeah. you can imagine how many, how many numbers we had. So um, good opportunity for the youth team. Um, but listen, if, if he was a little bit younger, then I, I still think Cops could make an impact off the bench. But his decision's been made. He wants to retire and he's doing really well in his other role now. So Not um, considered lazy himself. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you can score a few goals, we'll take you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best <laughs> but yeah I think that's where we'll leave it I've, uh, I've taken half an hour of your morning up I really appreciate you coming onto the onto the channel you're welcome anytime is there anything you want to ask me before we uh... no any, anything you, going forward anything you ever need just just give just give Robbie a shout I'm happy to to do whatever you need your star thank you very much yeah. so that's where we'll leave right, it if you've enjoyed it give thumbs up for us please comment in the section down below subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you in the next one